All right, on the bench. Today, out of a 2018 Ford Expedition with a 3.5, this is a 10R80 that I'm actually in the middle of rebuilding because it landed on my bench a little too early. And honestly, I need to keep up with the workload. It's very busy here. I already got my work for next week. Got some, I got a BMW, I got a couple of 6L80s to do. Uh, sold out of stock units, have nothing left on the shelf. I don't even have time to put them back in stock on the shelf. So it's very, very busy here. So I just need to, um, you know, I just got to keep up with the workload. So the story with this 10R80 is got a call from a wholesale account. This actually is a, a fire and rescue car. And they said uh, as they're driving it, it's not shifting correctly. So they brought it down to us. Did a code scan, P0733, gear ratio error in third. But when we drove this car, um, sometimes it would bang on the upshift, sometimes it would bang on the downshift. Uh, one time it felt like it bound up, uh, whatever gear, didn't pay attention what gear it was shifting into, and then driving it real slow, and then you give it some gas, it just raced up, like it ran away in gear. All kinds of crazy, crazy stuff this was doing, and I pulled it in, it was parked uh, in the back, and I wanted to pull it in the shop, so the installer for the uh, installer to pull out. And I put it in drive, and the car really wouldn't even move like it was bound up. And I gave it some gas. You could feel the engine was real, real heavy. Moved a little bit, then all of a sudden it broke free, and, and I was able to, you know, just drive it right in, no problem. So this pretty much is all due to one very common problem that these 10R80s had. Now, this is a 2018. And the problem is the sleeve moves on the CDF clutch drum. All right, so since then, they have updated it. And uh, I believe Ford had uh, put a, a, a lip there so this, uh, it can't really move anymore. But it moves away, and I didn't take the rings off the support yet, so you'll see the bottom ring. It actually moves away from the bottom ring, and it doesn't really even seal anymore. And this ring is all screwed up while these other three are perfect. And on this particular one, uh, it burned out the F-clutch drum. I'm replacing steels too. I have them here. And um, you know, the weird thing is the F-clutch drum is on from four through 10. And this was having a problem in some of the lower gears, but I guess it's very possible the clutch maybe was bleeding on or doing something, but the clutch is bad to the point where I have to change the steels too. So I got the two drums here. I got my, you know, the cylinder, the F-clutch drum right uh, inside this cylinder here, and it makes grooves where the clutches ride. So being the fact that this is a fire rescue car, you know, I'm sure they honestly beat the hell out of it. So I wanted to usually always replace this drum anyway because of the grooves for that F-clutch drum. Um, so I just want to show you the different things that I, um, you know, show you the drums. I want to show you the rings. I have the... Uh, the input shaft here and I have my ring resizes on that I buy from a company I belong to a, a site called Transmission Brotherhood on Facebook and there's a guy that sells these these are actually resizers and the installer since everything is 3d printed and they work fantastic it saves a lot of time uh, putting these rings on because there's like 10 rings that have to go on so and then you know and then for these I have another another set have the other here is for, for that one and here is the resizer you know 10 speed 10 r80 so great great tools to have so let me just get a little closer I'll show you the clutch pack we'll take a look at the drums I just wanted to you know share something with you guys um, so this could be you know maybe some common problems uh, with the 10 already and I'm, I'm sure there's a ton of videos out there uh, on these with the CDF clutch drums and these cylinders but um, I did want to uh, you know I couldn't really tear it down with you guys so I did want to uh, do something uh, with these uh, with this uh, transmission all right so let me get a little closer okay so here is the bad uh, CDF clutch drum and if you look here at the sleeve you can see the holes maybe are almost covered up, if you can see that there. Okay, and now here is the new drum. And then you can see the holes are way open there. So you can tell that sleeve moved. 
All right, another way you can tell also is let's take a look at the good drum. And we have really almost, you know, maybe no space here in between the bushing and the sleeve. Okay, if you can see that there. And now let's take a look at the band drum. And you can see we got a lot of space here. Okay, here. Actually, right here is what the sleeve moved down, this much right here. Sorry. Right here. All right, and as a result of that, this bottom ring, you can see this ring is all screwed up here when these other three are perfect. This bottom ring is no good. You know, a little longer, this thing would have just um, probably broke. The, the ring actually even is flipped around so it's totally no no good. All right, so I'm going to be replacing all three of these rings with my uh, that come in the kit and with the resizer. But and you could even see, you know, this ring is so stretched out it pretty much just will come right right off. Let me just take this ring off. So that's the bottom ring and these other ones again are perfect so the bottom ring was so stretched out it comes right off this ring would have tore you know so that's where our problem lies pretty much every one of them okay and again with this cylinder on the inside here the F clutch drum rides in here and you get some grooves where these clutches ride it gets beat up in here Here is the one that I got, the OE one from Ford. Okay, it's brand new. Let's back it out a little bit now. All right, you gotta switch over this ring gear. It has to be switched over. So you have a mark right here. And I have the, and now this, you gotta take the snap ring out from the inside. There's a snap ring in here. Um, and then you pull it up and then you gotta put it in and you got to line up the mark that's on the gear. I don't know if you can really see that. Um, line everything up here or you will get a vibration. All right, so that is those two items that I always get replaced. Again, here is the input shaft. And sometimes when you get certain codes, there's, there are uh, plugs in here that move. So what I do is I take a coat hanger, all right, and I just try each one to make sure it stops and bottoms out. All right, so there's one there, one there. Okay, you know, and if the plug is out of place, the thing may go all the way down, and this will actually cause some codes uh, to show up and not shift right, so that's another area I've heard that people have had problems and I'm going to keep my resizers on here. That. Okay, so here are the F clutches here. All right, so I don't really like these steels, especially because it's an emergency vehicle. So I'm getting the four steels to replace the clutches are burnt out. You can see the steels are no good. That one's real bad. And that is the F clutch. And also on this, as I was breaking it down, the A clutch, which goes into the case. <clears throat> okay, here's the um, support. So this is the A clutch piston. This is the B clutch here. And these clutches actually, I don't know if you can really see it, but these clutches actually are flaked down to nothing, which is another problem. All right, so again, 92,000 miles on this. So that's really about it. Um, as far as the valve body goes, okay, here is, here is my harness. You know, this goes into the case. I'm going to put all this back, put new O-rings on here. And the valve body here, I got brand new from Ford. It comes just like this. I'm telling you, I take it out of the box and I put it right in the car. 
all right, because these valve bodies also, I believe, have problems. Uh, it's very reasonable, and to me, it doesn't pay not to change it when you're doing these 10 speeds. As far as the fluid goes on these, uh, I'm going to go get a quart. Uh, it takes 13 quarts of the, the uh, Mercon ULV, which, which is the ultra low viscosity. All right, I'll go get a, a container of this. If you're ever going to be servicing your transmission as a 10 speed, I would get the fluid from the dealer. Um, give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, here is the fluid that I use in the 10 speeds right out of Ford, but I would use this and only this. You know, there are other ones that may be comparable to that, but this is a 10 speed, I don't want to take any chances. Here is my valve body. Uh, still on the box here, but I'm not really going to open it yet. And there is a core. They do want the old one back, but again, it's this whole thing. All solenoids. Comes with the harness. Everything. I'm telling you, take it out of the box. Put it right in the car. Right in the, in, in the trains. You know, the only thing it may not come with is this seal. And you know what? Let me open it up. I gotta open it anyway. Give me two minutes, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my brand new Ford valve body. Okay, and just that one seal that goes here, it does not come with. There's another seal here that it does come with. That does come in the kit, but you won't need it because it already has it. And again, just this seal right here. So also in the bag comes a new tag here and this is your solenoid body ID and solenoid strategy that if you're going to be changing even if you're just going to be changing the valve body you need to load those numbers in and you got to do that with uh, you know with the 10 speeds the last one I had I tried to load it in with my J2534 pass-through connector it wouldn't let me do it I had to get my programming here that had a four tool so I'm sure we're going to have to do the same thing again with these 10 speeds I don't think I can do it with my aftermarket stuff but you know I still like to get it done so this thing um, works uh, you know fine tunes it some people honestly put it in some people don't but really fine tunes in my opinion the way it works so I always like to put in the solenoid strategy and, and solenoid body ID so okay so that's that here is um, your on off his pump start stop okay got a plug in right there that bolts to the back and here is the pump okay so i just took this whole thing off and your filter of course goes here and the two seals that you saw in the valve body go there so that's it I'm going to actually continue on this tomorrow, but again, it's the 2018 Ford Expedition 3.5 10R80. Uh, all kinds of crazy shifting problems due to a bad sleeve on the CDF clutch drum. All right, and I think they produced these things, you know, honestly, I think they produced these things up to maybe 2022, 21 or 22. Uh, before they started to put the later one, later drum into, um, you know, production uh, into, inside the car. So, huge problem. The, uh, I did 110R60. I, I, this is actually my third one. 110R60 and 110R80. And both of them. And I even tore down a 10R60 somebody gave me so I could just kind of see what it looks like inside. Even that one was no good. The sleeve. So that is it for this. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next one.